Hey everyone, this is Fidel Hacker, AJ Raven, and I'm here with my recap and review of The Alienist, uh, Angel of Darkness, season number two, episode number four, which is titled The Gilded Age. Now, I already have done my recap and review of episode three, if you want to check that out, it's on the YouTube page. Anyway, this episode opens up with Laszlo going to meet this old woman who takes photographs of dead babies. However, a majority of the photographs are of babies that don't have any eyes painted on their eyelids. So Laszlo uh, asks the woman why she does it. And she's like, yeah, I lost an infant myself. So that's why I try to offer calmness to the mothers who have experienced such loss. The scene then moves to Sarah taking Bitsy to the lying-in hospital because Bitsy is going undercover in the hospital to work there as, a, as one of the wards and try to gain information and Sarah is like, yeah, I want you to get closer to the women there and I want you to find information about what's actually happening. And then the scene changes to Laszlo talking to the old woman and he notices two pictures. Now these two pictures have the dead kids with eyes painted on their eyelids and he's like, did you take these as well? And the old woman is like, yeah, I did. They were for two mothers. However, those two mothers are also dead. Sarah comes back to her detective agency and one of her employees tells her that there's a whole lot of bills and there's also invitation from, uh, uh, what was his name? Oxent? Yeah, Oxent. Oxent. Mr. Oxent, uh, the guy who was trying to flirt with Sarah in the previous episode. So he wants to uh, get in contact with Sarah and of course Sarah doesn't do anything about it. Anyway, Libby's there and Libby's came back for the file that she gave Sarah and Sarah's like, yeah, Libby, you can have it back. And she also asked Libby if she read the file and Libby's like, I'm not a gossip, Miss Sarah. And Sarah tells Libby that Colleen was the was the last person who was with Martha Knapp's baby and she asks Libby if Colleen is able, is capable of uh, murder, kidnapping and all of that stuff. And Libby basically, and yeah, Libby is like, I, I don't know. Then we have a scene between Colleen and Bitsy. So they're here to help wash up Helen. And this is where we find out that the same guy who ended up impregnating Helen and sending her to the lying in hospital, Richard, uh, good uh, good send or something mr richard he also sent colleen there so colleen was one of the women he had slept with and colleen came here her baby of course was still born and she tells bitsy that richard didn't necessarily treat her well the same way he's treating helen so you can see that uh, Colleen is jealous of how Helen's being treated. We see Libby going into the office to, uh, to place the file back. However, before she's able to do it, the matron comes in and the matron is like, Libby, I want you out of my office right now. Then we are at Sarah's uh, detective agency and Mr. Lanaris is there. And Mr. Mr. Lanaris, of course, is very doubtful uh, when it comes to how Sarah and the rest are handling, handling this case. He's like, what are you guys doing? Why are you even here? Why aren't you out looking for my baby? And this is where Laszlo tells Mr. Lanaris that they are their only hope because the Amer American police isn't going to help them. Then there's also the upcoming war with Spain. So they sit him down and they explain their theories about who and who might have kidnapped their little daughter and what she is going through and they also tell Mr. N Lanaris that they have a person undercover at the lying in hospital Martha is clearly displeased, displeased with Libby and that's why she's punishing her by cleaning up the blood from the floor and you can see that Libby is very very uncomfortable she's sad she's worried she she basically doesn't like her, her life we have john moore looking at the newspaper and the newspaper headlines are filled with the upcoming war with spain and it's basically propaganda against spain about how the spanish are bad people so joanna cyrus's daughter comes up to meet uh, john and uh, his boss and his boss is like okay i'm i'm i want joanna to work for the new york times because she's talented but of course because joanna is a black young woman there are certain racial discrimination going on and john's like don't worry about it i uh, uh, joanna joanna and i'll team up sarah goes to meet with bitsy uh, 
in a church and this is where Bitsy tells Sarah about everything she, fo she found out about how Colleen was one of the women Richard was with and then she got pregnant and Richard sent her to the lying in hospital and Sarah is like yeah I want you to uh, grow closer to Colleen become her friend and gain more information Sarah also hands Bitsy a list of chemicals basically they want her to tell them who has been administrating uh, the drugs apparently Bitsy can unlock any lock so she unlocks the chemical room and she goes in and she finds the chemical that she's uh, looking for however as she's going through the ledger this is where Colleen comes in and Colleen is like Bitsy you aren't supposed to be here and Bitsy is like yeah I didn't know I, I got lost and Colleen is like you know what Bitsy I trust you we are back at the office and everyone is trying to figure out the motivations of the kidnapper and they also have uh, John's engagement party tonight and Richard will be there and Dr. Marco would be there and Sarah is like, you know what, I'm going to confront Marco and Richard at the party and Laszlo is like, wouldn't that cause a scene? And Sarah is like, you know what, John will understand. Laszlo and uh, Sarah come to John's engagement party and of course they're, they don't feel comfortable especially because they know that there's a kidnapped child out there and they aren't fans of all of the extravagance going on. While that's happening, John has is having an argument with Mr. Hurst about how Mr. Hurst is using the New York Journal to spread propaganda against the Spanish and he doesn't like that. And Mr. Hurst is like, John, I know that you know more than you're telling me about the Lenaris baby. And John just tells Hurst that he can't say anything because he works for the New York Times. However, as far as his opinion goes, the Lenaris family is innocent. And he wants Mr. Hurst to, even if he wants to talk about the Lenaris family in the newspaper, John wants Mr. Hurst to not go overboard with it. So John walks out to meet up with Violet and this is where Burns comes in and he is apparently uninvited and he's come with a gift. And it's clear that Hurst doesn't think of uh, Burns as an equal and Burns is a person who has a very big ego and he doesn't like being treated in an inferior way and that's uh, how he, uh, and that's why he ends up threatening Mencroft uh, who's, a, who's an attendant to Mr. Hurst because he can't say anything to Mr. Hurst so he ends up attacking Mencroft and I'm like Burns I know that you're hurting that no one gives you respect but basically you're not a good person. Now this scene took me by surprise so it turns out that Joanna is at the engagement party but she's she's covered her face because again she's a black young woman and she would have stood out in a party like this and I'm like I really hope that this show ends up focusing more on Joanna because she is listening to gossip and she's then taking a few minutes to write it all down so yeah she's passionate about her job. Sarah ends up talking to John about how she and Laszlo plan to confront uh, Marco and Richard at a party and John doesn't like the idea. He's like, Sarah, if you do that, you're going to embarrass Violet and Sarah doesn't necessarily care. Before these two can talk more, Oxen comes in and Oxen is like, uh, Sarah, did you get my invitation? You didn't reply and Sarah's like, yeah, I have been way too busy, but I'll reply soon. And before these two can talk more, this is where Mr. Hurst ends up giving a toast to John and he presents John and Violet with an engagement present, which is basically this weird a motor vehicle and they are all, a whole lot of them are making fun of John and Sarah doesn't like it because she knows that John doesn't like being made fun of and she she wants better for John Laszlo ends up talking to Richard and Richard is like are you accusing me of something Laszlo and Laszlo is like no I'm not accusing you I'm just saying that do you think that Colleen is capable of murder and kidnapping and Richard is like no she's not Sarah goes to talk to John and she tells uh, John that she wasn't comfortable with how he, John was being treated at the party. He deserves better. He deserves someone who's free and who isn't uh, entrapped by all of the societal expectations and norms. And this is where John is like, so someone like you and Sarah's like, yeah, someone like me, but not me. And then John ends up comparing her to a Yazoo tributary 
which is basically a stream of water or a tributary that's flowing next to the river. However, it doesn't join the river and all of that stuff. And John actually tells Sarah that she's not better than the rest of the women in the society because Sarah is a privileged woman. And even though she wants to go against society, she's still in a fancy dress. She's still attending parties. She's, she's still corseted. So Sarah isn't being true to herself, so she has no standing to come here and judge John. Bitsy is trying to uh, get closer to Colleen, and Bitsy is like, yeah, I know that you have secret, especially uh, the secret between you and Dr. Marcos. And we all know that Dr. Marco is basically assaulting uh, Colleen. However, it's not really mentioned, and Colleen doesn't like that, so she walks away. And this is where Libby tells Bitsy that Colleen doesn't like talking about what Mar Dr. Marcos does to her. So it's better if Bitsy apologizes. So Libby goes to check on Helen and it turns out that Helen is trying to get in a dress because she wants to get out of here. She wants to talk to Richard and she asks Libby for help. And Libby is like, you know what, of course I'll help you. Now there's this weird thing in the engagement party where a cake is wheeled out and these four women uh, are standing around the cake and apparently they have to plunge their hands into the cake to find the ring and I'm like, yeah, I'm not a fan of that. Violet isn't at the cake ceremony because she's hooking up with John. She's yes, she's jealous about how much time John spends with Sarah and she and she's trying to romantically link with John to make her fall in love with her and I'm like, "Oh, poor V, don't do this." While the women are trying to find the ring and they find the ring and then everyone comes in and they start eating cake with their bare hands and I'm like, "Okay, so this is so weird. Everyone's so bougie, but then again they're also animals and I'm like, yeah, that's just human nature." And Laszlo is basically speaking to himself about all of his observations and then this new woman comes in and we find out that she's an alienist too. She's uh, a professor. She was a professor to Violet for one semester and she ends up uh, connecting with Dr. Laszlo. She knows about Laszlo and Laszlo has uh, read all of her work. So yeah, Laszlo has a new romantic interest you all. Sarah is drunk. She's in her emotions and she doesn't give an F anymore. So she decides to confront uh, Marco. However, before she's able to say anything, Helen comes in and she causes a scene. She's like, I'm here to meet with Richard. Richard, where are you? Richard, of course, runs away. And Marco comes in to handle the situation. And he's like, Helen, I need you to come with me away from the party. And Sarah comes in to help Helen. And he's and she's like, Dr. Marco, Marco, if you touch Helen, I'm going to scream bloody murder and cause a scene. And this is where Dr. Marco tells Helen that, you know what? Richard told me to take you to uh, the townhouse. So why don't you come with me? And Sarah tries to stop Helen. But Helen, because she's so in love or obsessed with Richard, she decides to go with Dr. Marco. Now everyone's in the office again. And they're still trying to figure out how to solve the case. And Laszlo is like, Everything is a distraction. We aren't looking at, at the thing that we have to look at that's in front of us. And while they're trying to think of more stuff, this is where Mrs. Uh, Senora Lenares comes in and she wants to talk to Laszlo and the rest. While that's happening, Bitsy comes in to apologize to Colleen and Colleen is like, you know what, it's okay. And this is where Colleen tells Bitsy about how she came here pregnant. Uh, however, the doctor didn't didn't like stitch up her tubes. She can still have a t she can still have children because uh, she was losing way too blood, so they sh didn't uh, perform any surgery on her. Senora Lanaras ends up telling Laszlo and Sarah that she basically saw the woman who was after her child, and she remembers who that woman was. Bitsy and Colleen are still talking and this is where Bitsy is like, Colleen, I want you to tell me what happened to the nap baby. And Colleen is like, why are you asking me? And then the scene shifts to Sarah's office. One of her employees ends up bringing the pho photographs uh, of the day in the park. And they are, they are all looking at the photographs. And this is where M Senora Lanaris uh, identifies or recognizes the woman who was after her and of course Sarah recognizes that person as well so it turns out that the kidnapper is someone we have met before 
Colleen doesn't like Bitsy asking her questions about the nap baby because apparently everyone has been blaming Colleen uh, uh, for the kidnap and uh, kidnapping and the murder. So she slaps Bitsy and these two fight and Bitsy runs away. She locks herself in a room and it turns out that Libby is already there in the room and she's filling something in a syringe. She ends up injecting the syringe, uh, the content of the syringe into Bitsy. Bitsy falls to the ground. Uh, Libby opens the door and she runs away and Colleen and everyone else is worried about what's happening. Sarah and the rest come to the scene and uh, Laszlo asks Colleen where Libby is and Colleen is like, I don't know, Libby just ran away. So uh, Laszlo and one of the twins go after Libby. However, Libby has already disappeared and Bitsy is on the floor. So the other twin brother injects her with an antidote. And at first I was like, oh no, I don't want Bitsy to die, I want her to be alive, so thankfully she is alive and it was a close call. Libby, for some reason, decides to go to the matron's apartment and she comes in and the matron is like, Libby, why are you here? What do you want? And Libby slaps the matron and she ends up talking about how she wants sanctuary, how she wants to come in, how she wants comfort. And she's clearly upset with how the matron has been treating her. So she ends up choking the matron and the matron is like, you're hurting me, Libby. And then Libby proceeds to kill her. And I, I wasn't expecting matron to die. I actually thought that maybe the matron had teamed up with Libby but no Libby ends up killing the matron and the episode ends with Libby drawing eyes on the matron's eyelids her dead body on the ground and she drew the eyes with the matron's own blood and it was a very creepy end to an episode and yeah I actually liked how the alienist ended up showing us uh, who the kidnapper is again I still think that there's more than one person involved I'm not really sure but yeah I will be doing my written review of this episode down uh, for the geek theory the, the link to that will be down in the comment section below as soon as the review goes up let me know what you thought the uh, thought of the episode I enjoyed it I'm really enjoying the second season and fingers crossed that uh, the alienist comes back for a third season let's see but anyway, let me know what you thought of the episode and until next time, stay happy, stay safe, stay blessed. See you guys later.